Tommy? No, um, Colin just got knocked out. Tell me exactly what's happened. He just got punched right to the floor and his, his blood from coming from his mouth and the nose. Right, where, was he punched in the face? Yes, right in the face once and he went straight to the floor. Is he awake? No, he's unconscious. He's OK. What is the address? As the car park. Sorry, wait, where? As the car park. As the car park. It was a busy Saturday on 3rd of August 2013 when Brian Holmes, 64, and wife Christine, 60, arrived at the Asda supermarket in Biggleswade, Bedfordshire. The couple, who were from Sandy, Bedfordshire, had gone into town to purchase some shorts. They were somewhat upbeat as only a few days before, Brian Holmes had been given the all clear after extensive cancer treatment. Christine suffered with rheumatoid arthritis and as a disabled blue badge holder, she was entitled to park in a restricted disabled parking space. After finding a space, the couple parked and went inside the store. At around this time, Alan Watts, a 65-year-old retired builder, arrived in his Range Rover with his wife, who Watts later claimed had a bad knee. Therefore, he was trying to find a parking spot near to the store's entrance. Brian, who had made some purchases in the store, returned to the car to put his shopping away, while Christine continued looking around the supermarket. As the car park only had 10 disabled bays outside the main entrance, and as to being extra busy, as it was a Saturday, Watts had been unable to find a disabled space. When he saw Brian walking back to his vehicle parked in the disabled parking bay and putting his bag in the boot, he called out to Brian. You look like you need a wheelchair, he said. Watts did not have a disabled badge, and was therefore ineligible to park in the space anyway, but still shouted abuse at Brian, who he believed did not need the disabled space. Watts then went on to get out of his car, and an altercation occurred which resulted in him punching Brian Holmes twice before he fell to the floor, fracturing his skull. Watts then drove away, but stunned shoppers had noted his car registration number. A first aid trained manager from Asda was first to go to Brian's aid, along with other members of the public. Nurse Patricia Pearson said that she saw the entire incident unfold. She said, Watts looked aggressive and her instinct told her something bad would happen. I felt very fearful for the victim. He fell backwards, straight backwards, rigidly backwards and I heard the crack of his head. She also stated that Watts seemed normal as he got in his car and drove away. Christine had been expecting Brian to rejoin her in Asda, but when she had completed her own shopping and came outside, she found police near to her car. Her husband's legs were clearly visible sticking out from behind a screen that had been set up by paramedics. Emergency crews put Christine into the back of a police car and made sure her son was with her. Telling her she was in shock, she said, I thought this must be bad. Brian was flown to Aidan Brooks Hospital in Cambridge, where a care team concluded that his injuries were non-survivable. The following day, on Sunday, 4th of August, Brian Holmes' life support system was turned off and he passed away surrounded by his family. Alan, if you have been arrested for GBH, Mr Holmes was airlifted to Aidan Brooks Hospital, where he remains in a critical condition. Now, tell me as much detail as you can, mm -hmm. what happened from the point you entered Asda's car park? car park? The wife wanted to do some shopping in Asda, so I pulled into Asda, but she's, she's got a dodgy leg, so I yep. tried to park in a disabled place, mm -hmm. but as it happened, there was none available. So I parked as near as I could to the disabled space, a chap, I don't know who it was or what his name yeah. was or anything like that, came walking across and I looked at him and I thought, well, he don't need a wheelchair. Mm. He was parked in a disabled space, mm. as far as I was concerned. He was taking up parking spaces for other invalid people. So I just leant across and I said, I said, you don't look like you need a wheelchair. Well, that was it. He went up into one. And I'd got the window open with my arm on it like that, because it's hot. Mm. He's grabbed my arm. I've managed to get out the motor. Yep. With that, 
he's come at me again. And I've said to him, get away. Then I went to push him away, to get him away from me, because, yep. you know, I thought he was going to hit me. Yeah. Right? And then he's grabbed hold of my arm again. Mm. And purely in self-defence, I hit him with my left hand. And he went down, and I can still hear it now, he, he banged his head, something chronic, on the floor. So all I did, I just got in my car, I've got to get away. I didn't know if, any, if I was going to get attacked again. So I just went straight home, parked up, and that was it. So then I went to push him away to get him away from me because, yeah. you know, I thought he was going to hit me, yeah. right? And that is when I still couldn't get rid of him. Yeah. That is when I hit him with my left hand. And I only hit him once. Do you have any um, questions at all? Well, there, there's one. Even though this chap started all of this, I, I, I just wanted to know, how is he? Well, at the moment, we, you know, we don't know no. exactly. I would hate for later. anything really serious to happen. No. You've been further arrested on um, suspicion of manslaughter. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry he's passed away. It was never ever my intention whatsoever. I was just there, to, I was defending myself. You did make the first comment. Why, why did you make that first comment? Well, because he's parked in an invalid uh, uh, wheelchair car park space. Mm. He wasn't limping, he was quite brisk in the way he walked across, mm. and that's why I made that comment. I said, you don't look like you need a wheelchair. Well, if your wife qualifies through her blue badge, you wouldn't look like you needed a wheelchair, but you'd still be the person driving her. Yeah, well, there'd be two of us, wouldn't there? Yeah, well, his wife was in the shop. So, another statement yeah. is that the male that was hit had a relaxed posture, had his arms down by his side. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm a little bit agitated or concerned, not agitated, I'm a little bit worried that those statements uh, could harm me. Right. Solely and purely because they're not true. I was the victim in that car park. He attacked me. Watts was charged with the manslaughter of Brian Holmes, which he denied. He told Luton Crown Court that he acted in self-defence when he struck Brian, when he fell and fractured his skull. Anne Evans, prosecuting, said Watts showed extraordinary violence. In his defence, Watts said he was acting in self-defence and that Brian Holmes was effing and blinding at him and pulling at his arm. He only admitted to punching Brian once, but CCTV footage showed Brian walking away and Watts pursuing him, then punching him in the head twice. Watts explained that he left the scene immediately because he wanted to get his wife home and didn't know whether he was going to be attacked again. Alan Watts was found guilty of the manslaughter of Brian Holmes at Luton Crown Court. Sentencing Watts to five years, Judge Michael Kay, QC, said it was a case of manslaughter akin to road rage, adding, You didn't wait to see what you could do to help. That would have been the actions of a humane and remorseful individual. Detective Inspector Liz Mead from Bedfordshire Police said the case was a sharp and timely reminder for people to think before they act. Brian's family described him in a short statement as a caring, loving man with no enemies and many friends. They said, we are pleased that the trial is now over and that justice has been done. Brian was deprived of his life and our family have been deprived of a loving husband, father, stepfather and granddad. Many, many more people have been deprived of a good and loyal friend. Brian was in in every sense of the word, a gentleman, a caring, loving man with no enemies and many friends, a man for whom caring was second nature and his wife and family his first priority. Christine said, He has destroyed our lives completely and then he tried to get away with it. It's unbelievable Brian has lost his life because I parked in a disabled space. It was revealed after the attack that Brian was not even driving that day and in fact, he had never held a licence. It was his wife, Christine, who owned and drove the car that day. 
making it all seem even more tragic. Miss Evans said, This is a case about how a moment of madness can change people's lives forever.